people, and welcome back to the Salem Intruder. Today I came across a very helpful comment from Juan Shannon Burrell, a former editor for Soaps.com, who said, Renee is a classic Days character who was tormented in love, chased by the Salem Strangler, and was only brutally murdered to gain ratings. You need to do research if you don't know the details about EJ's shooting. It was on YouTube. And plenty of Days fans are remember these important classic characters and enjoy the brief travel back in time to when Days was it. Oh, and Craig and Nancy are not difficult to learn about. They are recent characters. So, in light of this very insightful advice, I have decided to begin a new series. Renee 101. In this course, we'll dive deep about all the information society possesses about Renee Dumond. We'll peel back the layers of the onion that is Renee Dumond, and by the end, you'll know her better than your own family members. This series will consist of four lectures, and at the end, there will be a final that would be worth 100,000 points. Let's begin. Lecture 1. So, Renee Dumond, she was on the show from 1980 to 1984. She died via a poisoned knife in the back on April 12, 1984. Now, I would just like to point out that on a previous episode, Renee slash Sarah... Renee, you bitch! ...mentions that she remembers Abigail Devereaux de Mera as a toddler... This would be false, because Abigail's first appearance was in 1992, and Renee's death was in 1984, so they would have never met. But you know who she would remember? Sarah Horton, born 1981, a year after Renee was introduced. Which actually means they're making Sarah look a lot younger than she actually is. She should be 41, Lindsay Godfrey is 33. Those are just two of many continuity errors I'm sure we'll uncover in this lecture series. Shannon, I hope you're happy with yourself. First, let's talk about Renee Basics. Renee has three main love interests you'll want to remember. David Banning, Alex Marshall, and the one and only Tony DeMera. She was very good friends with Marlena, and at one time was her patient. There is one scene that I think gives a nice overview of the history and character traits of Renee Dumond, so that's the scene we'll be studying today. Everyone turning your textbooks to the March 3rd episode of Days of Our Lives, the island chicken scene. If you haven't watched this episode yet, I would highly recommend watching it. I was not able to steal the footage from anywhere, because I am not a professional hacker yet. So, the scene begins with Renee and Tony sitting at a dining room table in the island-style Demera mansion. Tony tries to eat some island chicken, but Renee bats his hand away, saying that he should know to wait for the other guests, and making some remarks about his lack of decorum. She surmises that Anna's lack of breeding has rubbed off on him. What we can learn from this is that Renee takes her and Tony's status as legal demeras very seriously, and it causes her to be very arrogant. Which brings us to the idea of old money. If you're familiar with F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, you may be familiar with the idea of old money and new money. A person who possesses old money inherited it from dead relatives and came into their wealth without having to work for it. A person who possesses new money earned their wealth and did not start out wealthy, so perhaps they may have a deeper appreciation for it. Like a lot of people on Days of Our Lives, Renee Dumond came into old money upon finding out she was Stefano Demera's daughter. So while she loves being wealthy, she is likely to take it for granted and has never had to work a day in her life. Now, don't come at me, Shannon. Her profession on Wikipedia and Days of Our Lives fandom is literally listed as socialite. If that doesn't scream old money, I don't know what does. In the next part of the scene, Abigail and Chad join Sarah, Renee, you bitch, and Tony. At first, she's really nice to them until they ask about Steve and Kayla. Then she goes off on everyone, gets super mad, and tells Abigail to sit down and eat if she wants to see her aunt and uncle. Blackmail alert. Notice, she is blackmailing Abigail with the well-being of her relatives. I personally would classify this as an abstract blackmail. But does she really know that what she's doing is blackmail? Remember this, because it'll be important later. Abigail and Chad sit down to eat, and Chad quite stupidly makes a comment about how there might be poison in the food. Then, Renee gets super mad and delivers the most iconic line of the entire island chicken scene. It is better okay. than fine. It is the best chicken you will have in your life. So eat. This shows us that she is very short-tempered. 
In the next segment, we see Steve and Kayla run in, thinking the chicken is poisoned. It turns out that Renee made sure the chicken did not get poisoned by switching out the poison with goat's milk. So why did Renee do this? This showcases another key character trait of hers. She is desperate to be liked, even if it means betraying Kristen, who it seems her loyalties lie with currently. And that's how the island chicken scene ends. So to summarize, what did we learn from this? Renee is A, a frequent, possibly subconscious user of blackmail, B, short-tempered, and C, desperate to be liked. This all tells us that she is toxic and manipulative, and definitely not great to be around. While she may work as a great villain on Days of Our Lives, people like this in our society, in the real world, usually get cancelled. To conclude today's Renee 101 lecture, don't be like Renee. Be nice to people. That's all for the Salem Intruder today. Like and subscribe, and see you next time.